Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today's lecture um, is on uh, innate immunity um, and uh, you are all familiar with uh, uh, the immune response which can be broadly categorized into the innate immune response and the uh, adaptive immune response. The innate immune response is the first line of defense and innate stands for inborn. It is a universal and evolutionary conserved mechanism of host defense against infection. The adaptive on the other hand takes some time, it is a little bit delayed um, and but it is a far more specific response than the innate response. Um, what uh, I would like to do is to compare the, um, the um, immune response to a nation's defense, uh, um, um, uh, defense network. A nation's defense network consists of the army, the air force, um, the navy, etc. And these all come together to form the, uh, the nation's defense uh, um, uh, network. Why is it that we have all these different agencies? That is because the uh, enemy can come in either through the sea, through the air or through the land. Similarly, uh, for the immune system, they, uh, it has got several different groups of cells and molecules and network that take care of this host defense. So, the first line of uh, defense is the innate immune response. For in case of a nation's defense network, often our borders are patrolled by the border security force and they are, um, they are responsible for its security. Subsequently, the army is called in in case it is required. So, the border security force can be compared to the innate immune response and the army um, can be uh, compared to, uh, the, uh, to uh, the part of the adaptive immune response. Um, the innate immune response, it predates the adaptive immune uh, response which means that is it is evolutionarily conserved and it is present in lower organisms, something that the adaptive immune response is not. The adaptive immune response is present only in, uh, in, uh, in uh, vertebrates. Um, the innate immune response uses receptors and effectors that are ancient in their lineage and they must, prote uh, pro must provide protection against a wide variety of, of pathogens. Um, Next, we should try and understand why is the innate immune response required um, and to in order to do this, we can compare it with respect to the doubling time of, uh, of pathogens versus uh, mammals. Um, in case of a pathogen, um, the doubling time is very fast. So, for example, if you, if you think in terms of microbes such as E. coli or salmonella, the doubling time is about 20 minutes, whereas that uh, for vertebrates and mammals, doubling time is lot longer. So, therefore, the pathogen is, an, is at an advantage with respect to doubling time because they can double much faster and they can overwhelm the host. In order to take care of that, what the host has done is to take care of uh, the uh, of uh, the of uh, of having different sorts of networks um, in case or uh, in case of the immune system that can deal with this fast doubling point. So um, they have they have they are, so that's why you have different kinds of cells and different mechanisms to deal with it. In essence, the innate immune response sensitizes the host to the arrival of the pathogen. It limits infection and modulates the adaptive immune response. And what we will try and do in this class is to understand the molecules and the processes by which the innate immune response sensitizes the host to pathogens. How does it limit infection? So, it is present only, it does not disseminate to all different parts of the body. And more importantly, how does it send a signal to the adaptive immune response so that you can generate a much better and a vigorous specific response. Okay. Um, what we will do here is to compare the differences between the innate and the adaptive uh, immune response. In case of receptors, 
um, the in case of the adaptive immune response you have specific uh, uh, you have a specific response and specificity is conferred by B cell receptors and T cell receptors. These are variable, these are variable because they need uh, to be specific for a particular pathogen. So, you have different combinations of genes coming together in case of B cell receptors or in case of T cell receptors that come together to form a specific uh, uh, receptor that uh, will be uh, for the pathogen. In case of innate immune response, the receptors are invariable, they are fixed in genome and rearrangement is not, not required. Um, the adaptive response is clonal, by clonal we mean that a particular um, a receptor gets amplified that means it clonal because it divides and that is the basis of the adaptive immune response. Such type of clonal receptors are not required in case of the adaptive uh, in case sorry in case of the innate immune response and all the cells uh, all cells of a class are are identical. Okay. Um, what the innate immune response does it, it, it recognizes conserved molecular patterns for example, uh, um, molecules that are present on microbial surfaces such as lipopolysaccharide, lipotychoic acids, mannans and so on. In case of the adaptive uh, immune response, the B cell receptor and the T cell receptor is able to find, find minute differences between molecular structures and including small changes that are present between different kinds of bacteria or different kinds of pathogens and these can be especially in case of, uh, in, uh, in case of proteins and, and peptides. Okay, um, the innate immune response has been selected over evolutionary time. So, we have the innate immune response which has been selected over time and whereas, the adaptive immune response selection is done on, on basis of individual somatic cells. That means, these are cells that, uh, that, uh, that express this particular uh, receptor and that is what is selected for and amplified and, and those are the and the ones specific for the antigens are the ones that get amplified and proliferate. Um, as mentioned previously, the innate immune response um, is a very quick. So, once, once a pathogen comes in, the innate immune response quickly uh, tries to uh, meet this pathogen and tries to limit um, the uh, or restrict the entry and the, dis and, um, the, the distribution of this pathogen over uh, the body. So, therefore, the response has to be very quick and very fast. The adaptive immune uh, response on the other hand is somewhat more delayed because you need selection of particular receptors that we recognize this particular pathogen and uh, can then the, it is it's only after selection that these cells will be able to target and generate a specific immune response to the um, to this uh, pathogen. Um, in case of uh, uh, adaptive immune response, it results in clonal expansion and differentiation of T cells and, and B cells. Whereas, in case of innate immune response, what happens is you have cytokines being produced, co-stimulatory molecules being produced, chemokines being produced. These are important in limiting um, the pathogen, in telling the body that the, that the body is under attack and as mentioned previously to modulate the adaptive immune response and how this occurs is something that we will try and understand during this uh, lecture. Okay. The key um, uh, players in innate immune uh, um, uh, in, in uh, the innate and adaptive response are uh, briefly um, shown over here. In case of the innate immune response, the physical barriers are the key. So, for example, we have the skin, the gut, the lung um, and so on. So, uh, pathogens cannot indiscriminately enter, there are physical barriers which are part of the innate immune response and um, there are cells and mechanisms by which these uh, that, that prevent the entry or indiscriminate entry of, of pathogens. In case of adaptive immune response is done mainly by the T cells and B cells and there are no physical barriers that play an important part over here. In case of soluble factors. Um, uh, in case of innate uh, immune uh, response, many proteins and, uh, and non-protein molecules are involved in this uh, response. In case of uh, the adaptive immune response, the secreted immunoglobulins are really the key um, effectors of uh, soluble factors in case of adaptive immunity. 
In case of cells, you have phagocytes, the natural killer cells, which are shown as NK cells, eosinophils, which play an important role um, in um, innate immunity. And as mentioned previously, again, in case of adaptive immune response, you have the T and the B lymphocytes. Okay, what um, uh, is shown in this particular slide is to show, uh, is to depict an interplay of uh, innate and adaptive responses. So, what is shown over here is that there is an, uh, an immature dendritic cell and, and this is a pathogen that is invading. These pathogens are recognized um, by or uh, by um, these receptors that are known as uh, TLRs or toll like receptors. Um, the once these pathogens come in contact with immature dendritic cells, these um, cells then differentiate into what is known as mature dendritic cells. These immature dendritic cells are in different parts of the body and up, upon contact with pathogen, they migrate into the lymph node cells and this is where, um, where maturation uh, takes and activation of the adaptive immune response takes place. Um, and what is shown over here is that um, um, the mature dendritic cell then um, presents the antigen to uh, what is shown over here as a naive T cell and this naive T cell one then gets activated, it differentiates into a, a, a T helper cell in here, um, again um, it produces interleukin 2, it differentiates and it produces uh, interferon gamma. Uh, which is a key um, a cytokine and uh, so as to start off what would be a typical uh, Th1 response or a pro-inflammatory um, T cell um, response. Okay. Um, there are other uh, mechanisms uh, that are part of the innate uh, immunity and which are listed over here. So, anatomical barriers as mentioned, you have mechanical barriers, you have low pH. Um, and there is a lot of, uh, of normal flora. So, there is competition. So, the pathogen has to compete with the normal flora in the body. Um, there are ways by which you can limit the spread of pathogens and mucus uh, entraps foreign microbes um, and that, that is shown over here. So, again, so again these are all ways by which um, uh, um, it can be limited. You have cilia that is present that propels microbes out of the body. You have other physiological barriers uh, too. Um, so, for example, fe fever retards growth of microbes. There is low pH in the stomach, which uh, is uh, not suitable uh, for the growth uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, microorganisms. In the tears, uh, in our tears, lysozyme is present, and lysozyme will make holes in bacteria um, and um, and kill them. Uh, you have complement which is present in blood which recognizes antigen antibody complexes which rec and also other microbial proteins as a result of which uh, you have uh, uh, you have killing of uh, different pathogens. More importantly, several antimicrobial factors are also present in, uh, in, in the intestinal uh, uh, and in the airway uh, fluids. So, for example, um, you have lysozymes, you have defensins which are small peptides, surfactant proteins etcetera that are produced which help to sort of limit the, the, uh, the number of uh, bacteria or pathogens or microbes that can enter into the body and cause damage. Okay. Um, uh, there are cellular mechanisms that um, are in place over here and some of the cellular um, cells that are involved are shown. So, the main cells are, are, are macrophages, neutrophils, monocytes and they, these are internalized uh, microbes and they ingest whole um, uh, and ingest these organisms. So, uh, as, as I mentioned the innate immune response is present in lower organisms also and what is shown over here is an example of that. So, uh, hemocytes act like macrophages in Drosophila whereas, the fat body acts as the equivalent of uh, the liver um, in mammals. Uh, so, Drosophila would have hemocytes which act like macrophages and fat body which are the equivalents of, uh, of the innate uh, of the important uh, uh, parts of the innate immune response in, in mammals. So, pus which is uh, also present which uh, often um, uh, occurs is actually an accumulation of dead cells and microbes together. So, again you can see a way by which you know um, the, the response is, is being limited. Okay. Uh, one of the important hallmarks of the innate immune response is inflammation and by inflammation we mean um, that uh, you know there is an inflamed surface uh, which often happens during a cut or invasion. And uh, this result and this is due to vasodilation 
um, and edema or fluid accumulation. So what happens over here there is increase in blood volume and um, uh, the tissue uh, heats up and it causes to, re uh, to redden. What happens is certain molecules such as histamines, prostaglandins etc uh, and cytokines are produced which cause this uh, vasodilation. So this leads to accumulation of fluid and these are all signs and signals that are sent by the body saying that it is under, under attack. And you have different mechanisms then uh, coming in place. So you have certain proteins that are present in the serum which uh, contain antibacterial uh, activity. So for example, you have natural antibodies. These are antibodies that are these are a part of the innate immune, immune uh, uh, system because um, they, uh, uh, they recognize um, some conserved uh, carbohydrate determinants that are present on several microbes. Um, you have uh, again a C-reactive protein which uh, is part of the complement uh, pathway uh, which binds to um, the, uh, the C polysaccharide again found in several microbes. What happens often is you have an influx of phagocytes that come into this affected area which is now red and which is filled with fluid. The first cells to arrive are the neutrophils and these come in because because they respond to a particular uh, uh, neutrophil attractant which is interleukin 8 and they enter tissues by a process of diapedesis and diapedesis is the way by which cells um, um, that are in blood or in uh, these things they can enter into tissues um, and subsequently macrophages also enter and they result in cytokines and they upregulate adhesion molecules. Um, there is also fever which uh, uh, increases the body temperature and which is not suitable for the growth of uh, microbes. So some of the mechanisms that are shown um, are uh, have been listed I am going to stress again uh, on, on, on a few. Uh, first is the induction of fever, um, cytokines are produced especially something like IL-1 um, which is uh, which is which results in, in, in the induction of fever. You have production of uh, stress hormones for example cortisol, cortisol is actually um, thought to suppress immune responses and these could be part of a network to, um, to regulate uh, the innate immune response. You have production of acute phase proteins in the liver, so the liver plays an important role and some of these uh, acute phase proteins that are well known are C reactive protein, mannose binding lectin, these are all uh, these all have antimicrobial uh, functions and the detailed mechanisms of these will be discussed uh, subsequently. Okay. One of the initial barriers uh, to infection is the epithelial uh, layer. Um, and the pathogens must develop a way by which they can get past the epithelium and the epithelium is present in several surfaces. So for example, the airways, uh, the gastrointestinal tract, the genito uh, urinary tract, cuts in the skin or burns and so on. So pathogens must develop uh, um, um, some means by which they can enter and go on to the uh, next host uh, too. So they have to, uh, to, to um, um, to conquer one host and then be able to transmit so that they can um, they can have other ho uh, other hosts so that they they can spread uh, uh, their uh, numbers. Okay, so this is an example of uh, a squamous epithelium which is uh, present in uh, capillaries, alveoli, and so on. And then you have the ciliated uh, columnar epithelium which is present in upper respiratory tract. You will note the cilia present there and the cilia helps to uh, um, get um, uh, the pathogens out uh, and so they help uh, in, in movement so that they can sort of move and, and maybe come in contact with some macrophages or some others that are present and hopefully um, be ingested uh, rather than entering uh, the body. Okay. Um, we will discuss uh, a little bit about some of uh, uh, the um, features of the immune, um, uh, innate immune response. One is the physical barrier uh, as mentioned mucus, uh, mucus uh, is produced by uh, the goblet cells and these again are, uh, um, are there which help in, um, in sort of limiting the spread of microbes and these are present in throughout the gastrointestinal and respiratory tracts. The composition of mucus is, is shown but the basic idea of mucus is that it protects the epithelium from uh, shear stress, enzymatic damage and uh, pathogen um, attachment. Okay. 
Um, there are several types of uh, cells that are uh, play uh, an important role in the innate uh, immune response. You have phagocytes, you have epithelial cells, dendritic cells, natural uh, killer cells, the CD5 positive B cells, gamma delta T cells, uh, cell secreting antimicrobial peptides and I will be discussing some of this in greater detail in the lecture. Okay. So, the first uh, important cell that uh, um, pathogens usually come in contact are our neutrophils and these are present in large numbers. For those of you who, uh, who have uh, done um, uh, blood counts, you would know that neutrophil count is very important because usually if the neutrophil count is increased, it often suggests that there is an active uh, uh, infection. Um, and that is what doctors often ask when they ask for blood counts they are looking for to, uh, to see if there is increase in neutrophil numbers and if neutrophil numbers increase it often um, it, uh, tells that there is an active infection that is, uh, that is going on. So, neutrophils are like a nation's BSF, they are the first ones to guard and first ones to respond to in injury and their job is to they ingest and they kill microbes. Um, and there are several bactericidal mechanisms present in, um, in, uh, in these neutrophils. Um, neutrophils are characterized by multi-lobed nuclei which is shown over here um, um, in green. So, these actively ingest and they kill microbes. Okay. Um, one of the main mechanisms by which um, neutrophils kill is uh, kill microbes is via the production uh, via the production of reactive oxygen species or uh, also known as ROI and in fact the main enzyme that is responsible for this is the NADPH uh, oxidase complex so uh, the NADPH uh, uh, oxidase complex gets activated and it produces superoxides and this superoxide um, uh, can uh, can react with other uh, molecules to form um, hydrogen peroxide and via myeloperoxidase it forms hypochlorous uh, um, acid so on and all these are antimicrobial in nature. One of the most important roles of neutrophils have, have been shown in patients who suffer from chronic granulomatous disease or CGD and these patients suffer from recurrent bacterial and fungal infections. That is because the NADPH oxidase is deficient or absent um, in their neutrophils and macrophages which um, allows the, the pathogens um, to have an advantage and so they are able to uh, cause these uh, infections in uh, these patients. So, um, uh, CGD is an important uh, uh, important uh, disease and uh, one should be somewhat aware of it. it. CGD also shows the importance of the role of neutrophils and especially the enzyme NADPH uh, oxidase. Okay. Um, there are apart from uh, the oxygen killing mechanisms, uh, neutrophils are also involved in other um, uh, pathways of, uh, of uh, limiting the spread of pathogens. One is uh, they express uh, these complement receptors, so they can rec recognize um, uh, uh, um, 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 the complement that is uh, or complement proteins that are bound or that bind uh, to these uh, pathogen surfaces. So, th so these complexes can be ingested um, uh, rather quickly. You also have um, FC receptor uh, gamma, so these so antigen antibody complexes can also be taken in or phagocytized by uh, into these neutrophils where these uh, complexes are, uh, are, uh, um, are sort of degraded and as a consequently uh, the immune response um, kicks in in a very strong manner. And these are part of the antimicrobial defense mechanisms. Some of the effector mechanisms in neutrophils are listed over here and you can see there are several. You have there are specific uh, granules in them um, for, uh, with uh, that contain um, for example, that is shown over here as um, cathelidicidin uh, which is um, an antimicrobial peptide. You have um, other enzymes you know, which are elastases, cathepsin G so on. Um, these are all part of the antimicrobial uh, defense network. The other uh, important cell 
um, are the macrophages. So, usually uh, when pathogens attack the first response is by neutrophils and then subsequently followed by macrophages. Uh, macrophages the number of macrophages are lot less um, in the blood um, and they are usually known as monocytes um, um, in the blood and in tissues known as macrophages. Um, and their main job is to phagocytize and kill um, um, uh, pathogens. The second important role that they have is that they process antigens and they present it to T cells and this is where I mentioned that modulating the adaptive immune response is an important aspect of uh, the innate, uh, innate uh, immunity. Uh, macrophages also produce cytokines and chemokines so uh, which are uh, important in initiating inflammation um, and uh, they act as uh, antigen presenting cells the, and this is very important because not only do they express MHC1 and MHC2 um, the roles of which we will be discussing subsequently which are and these MHC1, MHC2 they present uh, peptides to um, uh, T cell receptors. They also uh, macrophages also have the presence of co-stimulatory ligands. So, upon pathogen um, uh, entry macrophages upregulate um, the expression of uh, co-stimulatory uh, ligands and these are important, these play an important role in T cell activation and we will study the roles of these um, in, um, the, uh, in the appropriate uh, class. Macrophages contain several effectors, so they are they produce high amounts of reactive oxygen species ROI, they also produce high amounts of reactive nitrogen species and uh, microbial peptides, uh, antimicrobial peptides, the phagocytose. So, overall macrophages play an important role in innate immunity and this is uh, what is uh, shown of uh, uh, a typical macrophage. You, you can see they engulf particles, they form vacuoles and these vacuoles this is how uh, pathogens get digested and parts of the pathogen uh, are shown up on the cell surface along with MHC molecules. Um, the other important uh, cells that play an important role are the natural killer cells and these are the large granular lymphocytes. Um, and they are important because they kill virally infected and tumor cells. They are also important in secretion of cytokines and, and chemokines. Uh, one of the main roles of the natural killer cells is uh, antibody dependent cytotoxicity or known as ADCC. They are extremely good at ADCC which means they can capture antigen antibody complexes um, uh, is an, uh, that antigen antibody complex that are bound to pathogens and can uh, clear the body of antigen antibody complexes. So, one of the main roles of uh, NK cells is in ADCC and as mentioned they are also important in production of tumors uh, in, in sorry in production of cytokines example IL-12 which play an important role in anti-tumor uh, mechanisms um, and, and, and as mentioned you know NK cells play are, are important um, in terms of uh, uh, of or play a major role in the anti-tumor host response and one of which is through the production of uh, IL-12 uh, which is again an important cytokine. Uh, for uh, not only for initiation of uh, T cell responses or uh, modulation of T cell responses especially in terms of anti-tumor uh, immunity. Now NK receptors uh, there are two types of NK receptors uh, one um, that are inhibitory in nature uh, and the other uh, that are activating. So, you have the activating, um, um, activating um, uh, uh, receptors uh, and the um, inhibitory uh, uh, NK receptors. Um, so, the majority of the uh, NK receptors are inhibitory and detects uh, MHC class 1 molecules. Um, and so, the lack of a MHC class 1 uh, expression uh, results in NK killing. What often happens is during tumors there is lowered uh, um, MHC expression because what the tumors are trying to do they are trying to bypass the CD8 response and as a result of one, one of which uh, they do this is to lower MHC class 1 expression and so that is why the host has uh, the NK cells and where um, lowered MHC class 1 expression leads to killing of these um, of these uh, tumor cells. So, so um, NK cells take uh, or sort of uh, survey the body for lowered MHC class 1 expression which is a, a tumor strategy. In some cases uh, NK receptors are activating um, and especially they are activating because they associate with the molecule known as ADAPT12. 
Um, so, uh, um, one activating um, NK uh, receptor is uh, Li49H uh, which detects MHC like molecule and um, which is encoded by mouse uh, cytomegalovirus. And therefore, mice uh, strains encoding this particular NK uh, receptor are resistant to CMV infection or cytomegalovirus um, infection. So, uh, what uh, this, this is an example to show how NK cells uh, play an important role in antiviral as well as in anti tumor uh, um, uh, uh, um, immunity. Um, so, one example of that is um, uh, NK receptor Li49D which uh, detects uh, CHOK which is a ligand present on Chinese hamster ovary cells or CHO cells which results in killing. Um, and uh, as uh, mentioned previously, low numbers of NK cells or NK cytotoxicity, um, uh, lower, um, lower numbers of NK cells or, or lower amount of NK cytotoxicity increases tumor formation in mice. So, overall NK cells play an important role in antiviral and in, uh, in surveying um, the body uh, for, for tumors. They also play an important role in the um, antibody dependent cytotoxicity especially in clearing uh, of antigen antibody complexes. Okay. This is an example to show how NK cells respond to tumors. So, what is shown over here is an NK cell, it uh, has these receptors known as the FAS L, it expresses and which binds to FAS which results in death of uh, the tumor cells. Um, and over here uh, through a process of um, antibody dependent cytotoxicity, it, uh, um, this is a particular antibody that is secreted by the host which is recognizing this particular tumor antigen that is present over here. So, the NK cells recognizes this and it is getting act, it is got activated because with the FC gamma, it produces perforins, it produces granzymes, perforins are ones that, that make holes in these tumor cells. So, that, uh, the, so that molecules such as granzyme which are serine protease uh, like molecules can enter and initiate the death cascade which will result in death of these tumor cells. So, this is just an example or a model to show the interrelationship of how NK cells play a, an important response against tumor cells. Um, at this point students must be aware that the immune response is important not only for the uh, antipathogen response, but it is also important um, for surveying the body for tumors. So, uh, they may the uh, a robust immune response reduces tumor formation um, as well as it reduces infection by pathogens. Okay. Um, one of the effectors of innate immunity are antimicrobial defensins. Um, and these are antimicrobial peptides that are produced by innate uh, immune uh, cells uh, of the body. Um, so, uh, an example of this is shown by the fact that human patients suffering from recurrent uh, bacterial infection produces incre increased uh, plasma level, uh, levels of neutrophil defense, uh, defense in peptides. Um, now, uh, one of the reasons that uh, uh, the number of bacteria in the human small intestine uh, is, is less compared to that in the large uh, uh, intestine where there is you know um, a tremendous increase. If you see these numbers, these numbers are greatly increased in the larger uh, um, uh, intestine and it is thought because of the tissue specific expression of defensins uh, in the panet cells in the small intestine. So, in you have these cells known as the panet cells in the small intestine which produce uh, these uh, um, uh, defensins and which reduce the numbers of uh, bacteria present in there. Whereas, the large intestine does not have uh, panet cells and therefore, there is uh, there are there are cells uh, that do not produce uh, high levels of antimicrobial peptides as a result of which it uh, this may uh, be uh, the case. Um, an example of this was shown by the fact that expression of uh, defense in 5 in transgenic mice renders them resistant to infection by salmonella. So, th what this uh, clearly shows the relationship or the importance of antimicrobial peptides in defense against pathogen and in this case it is uh, the it is it is salmonella. Okay. Um, now, in terms of modulation of uh, the uh, immune response, uh, important cells are dendritic cells. I had shown a cartoon where upon pathogen entry you have uh, uh, 
um, these immature dendritic cells that are patrolling that pick up antigens and then travel to the lymph node um, where uh, they become where they activate T cells and that is uh, what is shown over here. This aspect is important because they are important in modulating the adaptive immune response and that is what is shown over here. You have dendritic cells over here and dendritic because they are because of the presence of dendrites over here and this dendritic cell is presenting MHC class 1 and with peptide to a T cell. Um, the important aspect about dendritic cells is that physiologically they are probably the more important or the most important antigen presenting cells because they are very efficient at presenting um, um, uh, MHC peptide complexes and they also express these co-stimulatory uh, ligands uh, known as CD8086 uh, which uh, are important in activation of T cells. So, for activation of T cells you need the T cell receptor, you also need co-stimulatory receptors which bind these ligands on dendritic cells. Together the signal is important for initiating the TH1 uh, uh, in, in initiating TH responses that are shown. Uh, um, there are some other cells that are also involved in uh, innate immunity. Um, you have the CD5 uh, B cells in the mouse peritoneal cavity which are also known as the Li1 B cells and what these uh, uh, B cells uh, do is that uh, they, um, they produce uh, natural antibodies to polysaccharides present on uh, microbes. Um, and as a consequence of that they sort of uh, it is it's, it's, again it is part of the innate response so um, it is inborn um, and so they sort of again limit uh, the spread of uh, pathogens. The other example are uh, gamma delta uh, T cells and in this case gamma delta T cells are present in um, the in, in the gamma delta C cells uh, some of them are present in on different epithelial surfaces and there are some are also present in blood. But in this case um, in this we are, we are talking about uh, gamma delta T cells which are induced upon stress and they produce uh, tissue specific factors in this case keratinocyte growth factor which is important in healing of the skin. Um, so, in different ways um, uh, innate immune cells may play an important role in uh, the defense network. Um, I have also I have already mentioned uh, the role of antimicrobial peptides and you have panet cells in the intestines which are important for production of antimicrobial peptides which, uh, are which, uh, which lower uh, CFU numbers in the small uh, intestine. Now what are the sensor uh, systems uh, that are in place um, to take care of uh, these different uh, um, uh, pathogens. Uh, the first one are uh, toll like um, uh, receptors. Um, these toll like receptors are, uh, um, are molecules uh, that detect different parts of uh, microbial uh, um, uh, or, 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 or molecules present on microbes. So, there are different, uh, different molecules um, these are detected by toll like receptors and we will discuss a little bit in greater detail subsequently what they do is to recognize specific pattern on microbial components and whereas these patterns are not present in mammals. So, you can generate a specific response to microbes. The other um, is the complement system and the complements are a group of globulins which, uh, um, uh, which possess enzymatic activity they are present in blood and uh, they are important for specific as well as non-specific immune responses. So, um, how do how do how does one explain that? Uh, the specific response is because um, it uh, they are important in recognizing um, antigen antibody complexes and antibody as mentioned is part of the uh, adaptive immune response it is a specific uh, uh, immune response and so when antigen antibody complexes are are present um, complement um, results uh, it, it results in activation of uh, the complement system and which uh, the, the pathogen is killed because usually what happens is the pathogen is covered by antibodies different antibodies and these are recognized. Um, what about the role of the complement system in non-specific immune responses? As mentioned, um, uh, sometimes a uh, complement gets activated um, by certain components present on microbial um, uh, surfaces. This and this activation of the complement uh, results in lysis of uh, of uh, pathogens or microbes, as the case may be. Um, we will talk a little bit about adjuvants and uh, innate immunity. 
um, the innate immune uh, system or inflammation um, um, in order for a, a good um, antibody response the innate uh, immune system a uh, good antibody as or a cellular um, um, a response uh, a good innate uh, immune system uh, needs to be um, evoked. And um, what was found is that if you just gave the antigen al alone um, the response was rather poor. Um, however, if the antigen was mixed along with uh, an adjuvant and this adjuvant can be um, from bacteria. Um, or which uh, which is uh, in 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 uh, what is shown over here is uh, an example of complete trans adjuvant uh, or microbial products. Uh, then you are able to generate a very robust and um, a very good um, uh, uh, adaptive immune response. And so this is where innate immune uh, the innate immune system modulates adaptive immunity was clearly shown. And uh, Professor Charlie Janeway from Yale University was the one who recognized the importance of this. And um, he realized that the innate uh, immune arm had to be evoked to generate a robust uh, um, adaptive uh, uh, response. And he called the use of adjuvants by immunologists as the immunologist's dirty secrets. Because what the immunologists used to say that it is a specific response. However, to generate the specific response you had to mix the antigen along with the dirty components or in this case uh, components of, um, of, of microbes so that you know you could generate a better adaptive response and that is why it was thought to be uh, immunologist dirty secret and which is uh, as part of the folklore it has become very famous. Uh, what is known um, is that parts of uh, the uh, of, uh, of pathogens so for example uh, lipopolysaccharide or a CPG uh, hy uh, hypomethylated DNA that is present in bacteria uh, causes a septic shock and this is something again um, uh, or a massive in vivo response and that this is something again which we will discuss a little bit later. So, so um, parts of the uh, or molecules that are present on microbes um, uh, um, cause a host uh, reaction and it is a non-specific reaction, but it is a massive reaction and sometimes septic shock um, is uh, can cause even death um, and that is uh, and therefore it is an important aspect that we need to understand. Um, so, uh, now one of the parts that was shown um, is uh, Okay, um, so we will just go over here. So, we will just discuss a little bit about septic shock. Um, so, usually septic shock is caused by, um, by, by infections usually gram negative um, and what happens over here is because the infection, the infection is causing and it causes a massive host response. So, septic shock is actually a massive response by host cells. Um, uh, uh, by, uh, and th it is because the response is is so massive that it leads to multi organ failure um, of uh, you know different uh, organs are affected there is low blood pressure due to vasodilation increased vascular permeability and often it contributes to uh, to death. Uh, um, now um, as mentioned um, you know macrophages relieve uh, you know upon activation release TNF alpha. And this is an example of that. Uh, our macrophages um, release TNF alpha, and this which TNF alpha is a cytokine, and uh, um, it was uh, discovered because it had a cytotoxic effect on tumors, and that is why tumor necrosis factor. That's how it came up. However, now what is also known is that excess TNF alpha causes tissue wasting or loss in uh, body mass. So you can see that cytokines are produced in as part of the. Uh, host defense. However, if too much cytokines are produced then uh, there is a problem uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, it our body is unable to respond to this huge burst of cytokines and which are all contribute to septic uh, to, to this condition known as septic shock. It is important to realize about septic shock because septic shock is prevalent um, about um, and uh, especially it comes up in the post operative phase. Um, and to give some statistics about 30 percent of patients um, of uh, who suffer septic shock 
um, die in the in the US. So um, often these cases are post-operative and, and due to post-operative complications there are sometimes infections and these infections if they are not controlled they can lead to sepsis or septic shock. I will uh, now talk a little bit about uh, um, uh, about an infection that is prevalent uh, in India. This occurs especially during the monsoons um, uh, and it is caused by a spirochete known as a leptospira. Uh, leptospira is, uh, uh, is, is, is uh, humidity plays a very important role for leptospira. So, therefore, it shows up in monsoon seasons, uh, but otherwise it is usually prevalent um, in, uh, in, in rat kidneys uh, and, and therefore the name uh, rat fever. Um, so, uh, you, the, the urine is secreted in, uh, in, um, uh, um, in, in the streets and all, but during monsoons and all um, the water carries these and if there are cuts in the skin or something leptospira can enter into the body and cause uh, um, uh, rat fever. Now, this rat fever, the leptospira again enters and then proliferates uh, in, in, the, in the kidneys, uh, releasing uh, several, um, several uh, millions of, of, uh, of these organisms. Um, now, what happens with leptospira is leptospira has an extremely potent lipopolysaccharide. We had mentioned uh, this uh, and this lipopolysaccharide which is a part of uh, uh, the component of uh, the cell wall uh, of uh, bacteria, it evokes a extremely strong host response um, and therefore, leptospira can be tackled very easily with penicillin. So, therefore, in, in endemic cases where, where leptospira is often present, if a patient uh, shows up with uh, uh, with with the uh, symptoms that that suggest uh, um, uh, that it could be a case uh, of a leptospira, uh, the patient is often uh, put on to penicillin uh, because penicillin uh, kills the uh, leptospira very um, easily. And one of the problems that doctors face is that if there is delay in treatment of uh, of uh, of with penicillin, often you may what may happen is if you are if there is delay, you can kill the uh, kill the bacteria, but you can still lose the patient. That is because even dead bacteria will evoke a very strong host response and it is this host response which is so tremendous that uh, and it results in high production of cytokines and uh, ultimate uh, multi-organ failure which is uh, a major problem. So, therefore, a sepsis or septic shock is an important aspect and we should try and understand that uh, it is a, it is it is a reaction by the body against uh, these uh, um, uh, these uh, these uh, different pathogens, um, but it is a host response. It's the uncontrolled host response which results uh, in um, in multi-organ failure and in some cases death of patients. And we need to understand the importance of this uh, um, uh, um, in in you know and the importance of this cannot be uh, emphasized uh, um, any further. So, given the importance of LPS also known as endotoxin, um, uh, it is important to know uh, how uh, it is measured. So, any um, fluid for example, that needs to be injected in body uh, needs to be checked for the presence of endotoxin or LPS. And one of the ways uh, by which uh, LPS is measured is uh, to use the limulus amoebocyte lysate. Now, what is the limulus amoebocyte lysate? It is nothing but an extraction of blood cells uh, or the amoebocytes from uh, the horseshoe crab. Um, and what, what was found uh, several years back is that uh, uh, this lysate is extremely sensitive to small amounts of uh, LPS or, uh, or, or endotoxin. So, um, uh, what happens is it results in coagulation. So, you can see even in the crab, uh, the system in the crab has been used as a system to for the detection of endotoxin or LPS. And uh, endotoxin checking is extremely important because as mentioned uh, um, that if uh, these components of uh, uh, microbes enter our body, our body will generate a host response and this is an example of that and I I, I, I have shown this because it is an excellent example of uh, the use of the study of innate immunology um, for uh, uh, which has uh, which has some value in terms of patient uh, um, uh, or in uh, or has some translational value uh, because um, 
uh, it's it's the the lysate is from horseshoe crabs they are extremely sensitive to lipopolysaccharides so they coagulate so the coagulation is to limit the disease uh, or limit the spread and so this has been brought up in an assay for the detection of endotoxins so all major fluids that need to be injected into the body need to be checked and it is done um, um, usual uh, using often the um, the LAL um, uh, kit Okay, um, I will now uh, briefly uh, mention a little bit about the microbial detection and responses and two important parts um, uh, will be emphasized. One is uh, the detection in Drosophila and the importance of Drosophila is there because the toll receptor which is important for detection of gram positive bacteria and fungal pathogens um, was discovered in, in Drosophila. So, the toll receptor is important for this and through a series of pathways it is important for the production of antimicrobial peptides. Um, now, for uh, um, you have another pathway in Drosophila known as the immunodeficiency pathway or uh, the IDM pathway which, uh, which recognizes gram negative uh, bacteria. Um, now, we have ortho we have orthologs of uh, the toll uh, re uh, receptor in mammals which are known as the toll like receptors and what happens over here is um, th again through a series of pathways you have um, uh, you have the production of cytokines and co-stimulatory ligands. So, what is shown over here is this pathway uh, of response of, of detection of microbes and response is more or less conserved right from Drosophila to mammals. Um, and as mentioned over here the toll receptor was initially uh, shown in Drosophila and uh, in, in mammals you have toll like receptors, but the basic pathway um, is conserved. However, in Drosophila you have the production of antimicrobial peptides whereas, in mammals you have the production of cytokines, co-stimulatory ligands and so on which will which are important for the adaptive immunity. Uh, but, but this is a good example of innate immune response because you can see that the major players are actually conserved in both Drosophila and mammals. Okay. Um, now, uh, again um, we need to understand we, we, we said um, that uh, lipopolysaccharide plays an important role. How is lipopolysaccharide uh, um, um, detected in mammals and how is it recognized? So, lipopolysaccharide um, uh, is uh, once it comes into this, uh, the blood it binds to lipopolysaccharide binding protein. Uh, LBP um, and it is this uh, lipo LPS and lipopolysaccharide binding protein is recognized by a molecule known as CD14 on host uh, uh, cells. Now, CD14 can bind to uh, this complex of lipopolysaccharide and uh, lipopolysaccharide binding protein, but it cannot signal on its own. In order for it to signal, it needs to be associated with a toll like receptor 4 uh, in this case. Uh, and now, for optimal signaling TLR4 which is present uh, on the extracellular domain is present on MD2. Now, there are two important parts over here for TLR4 um, uh, optimal action of TLR4 um, you it needs CD14 for the CD14 to bind to LPS and LPS binding protein for optimal signaling it needs MD2. So, you can see this complex that is important um, part that plays an important part in TLR4 uh, signaling. Okay. Subsequently, in mammals several orthologs uh, of uh, and paralogs of the TLR uh, receptors uh, have been have been shown. So, uh, I will highlight a few of them you can see in humans there are uh, there are 10 of them and TLR2 for example, it recognizes peptidoglycans, lipotychoic acids, um, TLR4 as mentioned recognizes uh, LPS, TLR5 uh, recognizes flagellin which is present on uh, which is important for flagellated bacteria. Um, uh, TLR7 uh, recognizes uh, single stranded RNA which is present in viruses. TLR9 very important which is present uh, it recognizes hypomethylated uh, uh, DNA uh, which is present in bacteria. Note um, our uh, DNA is, uh, is, is often methylated and so therefore, TLR, uh, TLR9 is unable to recognize. However, uh, microbial DNA is often hypomethylated and that acts as a good uh, way for differentiating this response. Note uh, uh, the innate re immune response uh, recognizes bacterial or microbial DNA because it is primarily uh, hypomethylated. 
Okay, so this is a rather complex slide and I will just uh, briefly um, summarize it uh, uh, for you. Um, you have different types of uh, TLRs and that is shown over here. Um, some of the TLRs are present on the cell surface and some of them are present in endosomes or, uh, uh, or intracellular. Um, suffice to say all of these uh, signal uh, and they result in production of uh, inflammatory um, cytokines uh, uh, and you have different pathways over here um, uh, that is shown. Um, I, will, I will move on to show, I will try and simplify it um, to show uh, how a surface TLR which is in this case TLR2 or TLR4, it signals uh, via certain molecules known as MYD88 which is an adapter molecule, um, uh, NF-kappa-B which uh, is an important transcription factor and these result in uh, production of cytokines. Um, what is also shown over here is, uh, is a pathway by which uh, uh, is uh, MYD88 independent and this is important in activation of uh, IRF3 which is an important in production of type 1 interference interferons and type 1 interferons and an important player in innate immunity. So, this uh, is to show you that there are different pathways by which TLRs can function, some via MYD88 uh, and some that are independent of MYD88, um, but nevertheless you have production of different cytokines um, uh, and one of which uh, is um, type 1 interferons which play a very important role in antiviral immunity. Um, this one um, uh, summarizes uh, um, the TLR9 uh, uh, and other, other TLRs that are present in endosomes. Again, uh, they go through different pathways and which produces different types of cytokines, some of which uh, are, um, are, uh, are type 1 interferons and the others uh, other cytokines, but nevertheless they are important uh, uh, in case of immunity. Uh, I, will, uh, I will just uh, uh, briefly summarize over here. To, uh, to, uh, to mention that uh, the binding of TLRs uh, are, are extremely important and this TLR signaling pathway is conserved between Drosophila and uh, higher um, organisms. The key signaling proteins are MYD88 which is an adapter molecule, um, IRAK um, which is uh, an interleukin 1 receptor associate kinase um, and in fact patients that uh, um, um, that uh, lack IRAK fail to produce these cytokines and it can be and having and not having IRAFK can be life threatening. Um, you have TRAF6 uh, which is a E3 ubiquitin ligase um, which is important for uh, the signaling pathway because uh, certain proteins may need to be degraded. Um, you have the mitogen uh, um, activated protein kinase pathway. Finally, you have uh, the IKK or the inhibitor kappa B which needs to be degraded so that NF kappa B can translocate into the nucleus and uh, uh, set off the uh, signaling uh, pathway. So, I will, I will before uh, going to the complement signaling uh, uh, system which will be taken up in the next class, I will briefly summarize this class uh, to say that what we have tried to uh, study in this class um, is um, the innate immune response, the different cells that are playing an important role um, in the innate immune response for example, neutrophils, macrophages, the NK cells, um, you have different molecules that play an important role, the anti defense and peptides, um, um, uh, the TLRs um, and the TLRs are especially important because of the conservation of the pathway between Drosophila and higher, uh, higher animals and, it, and it, this is really the core of innate immuno, uh, immunity. Uh, I also would like to mention the importance of the LAL uh, kit to detect endotoxin because here is where you can see a response uh, of a crab to LPS has been used as a assay uh, to detect li about LPS and endotoxin detection is extremely important because any fluids that need to be injected in patients are uh, have to be tested for the presence of endotoxins and this is important because high amounts of microbial components will result in a response by uh, the host cells and too much of a response can result in a condition known as sepsis. Thank you.